Hi, I'm Kirsten from Cox Communications, and welcome to Community Connection. This show highlights local organizations and leaders that contribute to our healthy and vibrant community. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. A show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. Hi, I'm Kirsten McLaughlin, Public Affairs Manager for Cox Communications, and this is Community Connection. Today we have a special episode for you. We have Assemblymember Doss Williams here to talk to us about the current drought. Welcome, Doss. Thanks for having me, Kirsten. Thanks for being here today. Why don't we start with you giving our viewers a quick overview of the drought, both statewide and locally? Well, first of all, this is the worst drought in recorded history of the state of California. So it is more important than ever for people to learn how to conserve more water, uh, how to use less water as a household, particularly on their yard, which is usually the largest consumer. It's also a reason why we've had to go into action to make sure that the legislature's actions make a difference for our unique community. Uh, we have prepared for the drought more than other communities, but as evidenced by the rainfall, we may also recover more slowly, and so the drought may be more relevant for us for a longer period of time. Uh, that's why we work to get money to make sure that we can pump water out of Kachuma. Uh, it required $2 million of help from the state that Senator Jackson and myself uh, secured for our local communities. So tell us a little bit more about why this drought is different than droughts in the past. Well, really climate change has hit us very, very hard. What's happening is that we are having less snow, much less snow. We are actually having more precipitation, but in shorter events, which makes it more difficult to store. Uh, and therefore, we can't really rely upon the state water system in the long run as a community. As our community, we need to invest more in conservation. We need to expand our recycled water systems, which is really the lowest cost way to get more water. We need to look for uh, what are essentially groundwater basins um, that we could put water in for future use. In November, statewide voters passed a $7.5 billion water bond. Can you tell us a little bit about what that water bond means for us here on the Central Coast? Absolutely. This will help with state funds whenever there is a local water agency that wants to invest in recycled water. And any water place where there's a sanitary district could do that because we are essentially letting most of our water supplies go out to the ocean. Because recycled water, even though it comes from your wastewater, essentially gets treated well enough to use for any outdoor use, probably better than that, in fact. And we're wasting it right now. We don't need to be wasting it. We can create a distributed si distribution system for recycled water, expand our own recycled water capability, and half of the money can come from the state. That's the, really the most important part of the water bond. The second is that the water bond cr creates funds that we use locally to protect open space uh, and uh, can help us manage groundwater in a more sustainable fashion. Uh, there are some other smaller projects that it can, fall, that it can fund, but let's al also not put all our faith <laughs> in the state coming to the rescue. We need to do a lot of things locally. We need to do a lot of things individually. And every person that's watching this program can save a lot of water by either re-landscaping their home um, or just simply letting their grass go gold um, or uh, to look at um, water rebate um, and audit programs that their local water agency has uh, the city of Santa Barbara has some of the best. 
uh, and I was proud to be a city council member for seven years during the development of some of those, including a great rebate program for either installing gray water or uh, re-landscaping your lawn uh, into drought tolerant plants. The city pays half up to a certain figure. We need to be doing this in all of the local South Coast communities because there's no reason to not save that water. Right, absolutely. And while the local piece is absolutely important, I'm going to keep you on the state piece for a little longer absolutely. since you are one of our state elected officials. Um, one of the most important local drought projects um, going on right now is the emergency pumping project at Lake Kachuma, um, which will provide for the conveyance of water if lake levels drop below the intake tower. Can you tell our viewers a little bit more about that project and the status of state funding that might be supporting that project? Absolutely. Just as in our previous drought, the lake levels have gotten to a dangerously low place. And now they are dropping to a point where if we relied on the typical infrastructure that we have there, we would not be able to get water out of Kachuma. Uh, because of that, it was necessary to have a pump, essentially to purchase a very, very high-tech big pump. <laughs> and um, the cost to local ratepayers would have been through the roof. And so Hannah Beth Jackson and myself, our senator, uh, and I worked with the county of Santa Barbara and with our local water agencies to essentially get a half a million dollars for each of the four members of um, the South Coast members that participate in the Kachuma project. And that, so all told, that's $2 million of state money coming to help defray the cost. Uh, and so number one, we could purchase the pump in time and number two, uh, that the burden wouldn't fall too heavily upon our local ratepayers. That's great. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's my job. <laughs> I love, do it, love doing it, love working to, to provide both the policy and the funds uh, for our, our local community to react to this crisis. Um, but of course, when the governor's office asked about those funds and when we went to the governor's office to ask for those funds, the biggest question they asked is, how much water are you saving? How much water is each of your agencies of saving? So the more that people save, the more the governor's administration seems to be willing to help local communities. And so uh, if you want to help me do my job, save water. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we've also been hearing about groundwater legislation that was passed in 2014. Um, what can we expect from new groundwater regulations? Well, essentially what the legislation does is requires that every local community have a sustainability plan. And it puts that on the local community what, that they can decide what that plan is, but the stick is that if a community doesn't do it, then the state will decide. I think uh, he, here locally we will create a local community, local community plans. I think they're very important right now to do because if we if most of folks are conserving, but some people are not, that could defeat the purpose of our conservation efforts. Right. Uh, of course, we would have more groundwater supplies if we invested heavier in recycled water, because the best way to clean water for drinking purposes is to have it go through the minerals in our, in our ground. It's kind of like pumping dirty water through one of those charcoal pumps, camping pumps, or Brita water filters. It's the best way to purify water is putting it through those minerals. Uh, and so we could enhance our groundwater supplies substantially if we invested in recycled water. Great. So now I'll let you move on to local conservation. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about your Drought Buster program. Well, this is a program that I'm doing with Cox Cable. Uh, so thank you for your participation. And what we are trying to do is make sure that people who have taken it upon themselves to use less water, they get recognized. So you can nominate yourself or someone else can nominate your yard if you have converted to drought tolerant landscaping um, or if you're just using less water uh, or perhaps you have a gray water project uh, that you're using essentially your shower and dishwater um, to, to make sure that there's enough water for your yard. So in either of those cases, 
bring those, those yards and those programs to my office. You can check out my website to get more information, or you can call us at 564-1649. We want to see a lot of these yards, and we want to showcase uh, as many as we can. Uh, and we will have, of course, the top three prizes, you know, uh, awards. And it's just important because the best way that people can save the most amount of water is by not watering or by watering very little um, their yard. And of course, that can be beautiful if you re-landscape with native plants. There's lots of great native wildflowers that use very little uh, water, for example. There's also other things that people can do. Uh, it's very easy uh, to get from their local water agency a little uh, tab of dye that allows you to see if your toilet is leaking. You can also request a water audit from your water agency, water checkups. That can make sure that you're not having leaking pipes and that you're not wasting water without realizing it. So transitioning back to some of the statewide policy, um, what do you see coming in the future for statewide policy on water? We clearly have ups and downs with drought up and down the state. So what's on the horizon for the legislature? Well, the first thing and the most important thing, I think, is to make sure that projects get funded very quickly, that the voters gave us the trust to invest in the water bond. We need to make sure that that money doesn't just sit around we need to get it out, out the door to worthwhile projects that will save water and secure the right kinds of supplies. I think that the other part of this is there will be large debates over additional conveyance throughout the state. This is not something that necessarily has much bearing on our water supplies. And of course, I will be looking at it very closely because I don't want the state to be spending a lot of money and us paying for it when it doesn't necessarily help us as much as it helps other parts of the state. I think we need the lessons of us going through the droughts several times is we do better when we take care of things ourselves. And when we take care of things ourselves in a real rational manner. There are many groundwater basins out there that are not completely used. Mm -hmm. um, if their water rights are already established, we could store water there. It's a lot more efficient than storing water in an open dam uh, because it doesn't have evaporation. We can invest more heavily in recycled water. We are just not exploring that amount and the amount of water that we could get from recycled water. And we can also conserve a whole lot more. The city of Santa Barbara's level of water, after it has instituted all of these, is very low per capita. If Goleta, Montecito had the same low level of water per capita, we would be able to insulate ourselves against the droughts for a drought for, of over a decade if we just did a better job of conserving. Wow. Um, and as we, we have a few minutes left, so as we start wrapping up, any additional information you'd like our viewers in the community to know? Well, I'm very excited to tell you that I just was named the chair of the Natural Resources Committee. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, which do doesn't directly work with just water supplies, but it, it has jurisdiction over energy uh, and over recycling and waste, both of which have a lot of uh, nexus with water use. Of course. Uh, because water use and water conveyance is one of the biggest ways that we waste energy across the state. So I'm excited to work on those subjects. Uh, to make sure that our energy choices match our values and that we're doing more renewable energy in the state. Uh, we made great progress in my first year uh, in the assembly four years ago, uh, but there's much more that we could do as a state to expand the amount of renewable energy uh, that is out there. Uh, and of course, that would lead correctly on water as well. A lot of our problems with water are created by climate change. And the more we can do to use less energy, the less problems of lack of water we will have in the future. Great. Well, good luck. <laughs> it's quite an agenda. But um, thank you so much for being here today. This is wonderful. Um, and so great to get the word out to folks on resources and what's coming to the community, et cetera. So thank you, Das. Thank
Thank you so much for having me, Kirsten. And thank you. Coming up next, we have Madeline Ward from the city of Santa Barbara to talk to us about water conservation. Stay tuned. Over and under and then back around From break of day until the sun goes down And when the sun goes down you're counting stars What's going on? Welcome back. With me now is Madeline Ward from the City of Santa Barbara, here to talk to us about the city's drought efforts and water wise in Santa Barbara County. Welcome, Madeline. Thank you, Kirsten. Thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure. Why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about your role? Sure, so I currently am the Acting Water Conservation Coordinator for the City of Santa Barbara, so I help um, with the management of our conservation program. We have a really robust conservation program that we've had since the late 80s. Uh, we have quite a bit more staff now during the drought because we have such a high demand for our programs. But we have um, water checkups that are available to people. We have rebates. We have a lot of information on our website and a lot of school programs. So that's what I help manage. That's great. Can you tell us kind of overview about what the city is doing in, to address the current drought? Sure, so um, the city has always valued water conservation as one of our supplies. So conservation is really um, a way of life here in Santa Barbara, of course, and for the city. So we've always had a very strong conservation program. So we've really just ramped up everything that we're doing. We're doing a lot more advertising and messaging because people are really paying attention to what's happening and what they need to do. So we're giving them very tangible things to do now. We're also focusing a lot of our efforts on landscaping because that's where about half of our water use goes and it's also where people aren't very conscious of it. You know, when you brush your teeth, you see the water, but when you're sleeping and your sprinklers come on, you aren't really sure what they're doing. So we focus a lot of our drought outreach on landscape water use and getting people to reduce that. So landscape out and outdoor use is really where people can have the largest impact. Yes. Expand on that. Give our viewers some tools and tips. Sure, of course. So in the landscape, um, here in Santa Barbara, we're so lucky that we live in a really nice uh, temperate climate. It's semi-arid, so really a wide variety of plants can grow here, but most of them require a lot of water. So if you want something that's going to be low maintenance and also low water using, we recommend that you choose water-wise plants or native plants. So those that are really adapted to less water, um, that's the first step is sort of picking a plant palette that's going to work for this climate and work for your ability so you don't have to constantly mow or fertilize or water something. And then in terms of how you water plants, um, we, we really appreciate the hose draggers, anyone who's hand watering, we appreciate that because you're not gonna be out there watering in the rain most likely. So anyone who's <laughs> watering by hand, that's really an efficient way to water. Um, another thing we recommend is drip irrigation because it uh, distributes water right to the root zone of the plants and rather than misting or spraying or running off, um, drip irrigation is very uh, easy to retrofit too. If you have existing plants, that are watered with a pop-up spray, it's much easier to retrofit them. It does not take that much uh, labor or money to retrofit those. And then if you do have a lawn, there's, um, we really recommend that people are letting those go, especially during the winter lawns here. We got a great rainstorm. We're hopefully gonna get some more soon. Um, they can generally go dormant in the winter and not require any additional watering as long as we get enough rain. So really cutting back on the amount of water that you're applying to your lawn. So for our viewers who are interested in learning more about um, the correct plant palettes and different types of irrigation systems, where do they turn for more resources? Our website has many resources about landscaping. We have this great um, virtual garden tour website where you can take a look at different gardens that are here in the county. You can search based on front yards and backyards 
hillsides, plants that can do well under oak trees, which is something a lot of people struggle with. So it's over a thousand water-wise plants that are located in that database. And if you just scroll through the pictures, click on the plants that look interesting to you, and it'll pull up the information on them. Then you can create a plant list, for example, take it to a nursery, and purchase those plants that you desired. Great, and what about on the irrigation system front? And on the irrigation system, we have a lot of great how-to videos because some people are very hands-on, and so they want to be able to tell how to check their sprinklers for leaks, how to fix them. So we have a lot of great videos on our website on how to identify these. Um, we also have a watering calculator so people know how much to water their plants because it's always a big mystery. And as the seasons change, the plants have different water needs. So it tells you how much to water during the different seasons. And that's a point I want to touch on a little bit because um, I think we all sort of set our irrigation systems oh, yeah. and forget about them. Mm -hmm. So um, tell our viewers a little bit more about good best practices around irrigation Perfect. timing. Yes, that's um, one of the most important things you can do, especially now, um, is turning it down when it's cooler. So the set it and forget it is something we do not encourage anyone to do. It's not good for your water bill and it's not good for your plants because their needs really follow this irrigation bell curve. It's higher in the summer and it really drops off in the shoulder months, which is spring and fall. And then in the winter, especially when it rains, turn it off. If we get about an inch of rain, you can usually leave your system off for about 10 days. If we get more than that, two weeks, it just keeps extending. Um, and then you just check your soil and see if it's dry and if it needs to be watered. But we always recommend that you turn it off. So on our website, we have this very easy way to adjust your uh, sprinkler timer so that you're following that irrigation bell curve. And it's called the watering percent adjust. And um, almost every single sprinkler timer, even if they're quite old, they have a little feature on it called the percent adjust, or there's maybe just a little percent feature, or it says water budget. And you just match that percentage to what we have posted online every week, and your programs will run according to the plant water needs, which are going to be lower in the the fall and the spring. Oh wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about um, some of the rebates and other assistance programs available for folks who are interested in changing their landscape or their irrigation. Sure, so um, I'll speak about the city first. So the city of Santa Barbara, we have a great landscaping rebate, um, which is up to $1,000 for single family homes and up to $2,000 or $4,000 per meter on commercial, multifamily, HOA, etc. And this is to take existing high water using landscapes such as lawns or tropical plants and to convert it into something that's more water wise. So um, a common thing is people removing their lawns, putting in more climate appropriate plants and drip irrigation. But also if there's just um, an irrigation retrofit, it'll also cover that. Some people have water wise plants that are being watered with sprays and they would like to put in a drip system instead and it'll just cover that. So it covers half of the materials cost. It does not cover labor and the really important thing is before any work is done, before you take up a shovel or pull anything out, that you need to, to call the city and contact us for a pre-inspection. The exciting thing about that is that we just got a grant for different water providers in the county who are now going to be offering this again in their areas. So everyone is encouraged to contact their water provider and see if they have this rebate available because it's, it's a very popular one. A lot of people are excited about that. Um, and then also for the city, we have a free mulch program where we'll pay for the delivery of two truckloads of mulch per year. Um, that really helps keep evaporation down. We also have a washing machine rebate. Um, those old top loaders use about twice to three times as much water as some of the newer front loading machines. So we have a $150 rebate for that. And then we have one more program, which is the free sprinkler nozzle program. Um, there are types of nozzles that put out less water, so there's less misting and evaporation. And that is a program that's really all done through one website, which is freesprinklernozzles.com. So tell our viewers about um, the Gold is the New Green campaign. I've been seeing signs around town <laughs> and lots of lawns going gold. So. so the Gold is the New Green campaign is um, 
It's sort of a badge of honor for those who are letting their lawn go golden for the drought. Um, we have many people who took a look at their landscape and decided, you know what, this front lawn or these parkways, for example, I'm not using them, I'm not recreating on them, we're going to let it gold, go gold for the drought. And so um, we have these great little free lawn signs that say gold is the new green. Throughout California, there's been a few other campaigns like brown is the new green, yellow is the new green, but we really thought that gold is the new green had a nice ring to it. So those are available for um, City Water customers who are letting their lawns go golden. So I'm sure in your role, you see a lot of great examples and creative examples of how folks are reducing their water use, reducing their water bills. Can you share some of those with our viewers? Sure. So we have our um, WaterWise Citizen Spotlights that we do about once a month, and we're submitting them to Doss Williams' Drought Busters campaign as well. And they, um, each person's different, and uh, we're asking the community to cut back 20% community-wide, but for some people, they can maybe only cut back 5%. For others, maybe it's 60%. So it really depends on every person's situation. But a lot of what our um, customers have been doing is really focusing on their landscape. Certain areas they're letting go, um, they're mulching other areas that used to maybe be a high water use ground cover, taking a look at exactly what their sprinklers are watering and changing that either to drip or redirecting them into different shrub beds. So it's been a lot of um, very small changes and very hands-on changes that we've been seeing and especially with adjusting the percent adjust on the controller to follow <laughs> that bell curve, we have a lot of people that have really taken that upon themselves and found that their water bill has reduced dramatically. Um, in terms of indoor, we have a lot of people going through the washing machine rebate. This is really a good time. You know, we, we're always going to be doing laundry, so let's put in something more efficient. And we also have more people that are installing gray water systems at this point. A laundry to landscape gray water system is really the simplest one to put in because it doesn't require a building permit, which is great. And that's taking the washing machine water, pumping it outside to the landscape and watering. Generally fruit trees is what's watered with that. Oh, interesting. And folks can find more information about gray water systems also on your website? Yes, they can. All right. So one of the things that caught my eye in looking at your website and all of your resources was your student video contest. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that program? Sure. So we have the WaterWise High School video contest, uh, which I believe is probably about 15 years old at this point that we've been doing this every year. And it's available for any high school in the county that wants to create um, a public service amount announcement type of commercial about water wise practices. And sometimes the, um, the topic, the theme changes. So this is being water wise in your landscape is what we really want uh, students to focus on this year. And they simply need to create a 30 second PSA and they can submit it to us. We'll, we'll review them and then we choose first, second, and third. We also have an audience choice award, which is very fun. We do that voting through Facebook. So the students can share with their um, Facebook networks and how many, how many likes each video gets is basically how we judge the, the audience favorite. Um, and then we have awards for those students um, and the student groups that win. So it's really fun. There's so many creative videos out there. We get um, animation. We get uh, you know siblings acting in them. We get parents <laughs> acting in them. We get all all kinds of you know hero type of things. And it's 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 really fun to see what the, the students come up with every year. Oh, I bet. Yeah. So in our last couple of minutes, are there any um, parting thoughts you'd like our viewers to take with them about drought and conservation? So this winter is really important for the county for us to determine um, where our reservoirs are going to be. So uh, Kachuma is very low at this point. It's uh, about 30% of capacity. And anyone who's driving by it can see that. It, it's, it's pretty alarming. So we're really hoping that we get um, many intense storms in order to generate runoff because when it rains here people tend to think that the droughts may be going away but really we need the ground to get very saturated before the water actually runs off into the reservoirs and fills it up so at this point we haven't had the reservoirs filling with any of the rain we've had so once we get many successive storms we'll hopefully see that that water level rising but in the meantime we're all using water every day 
So throughout the winter, we still need to really pay attention to how we're using water, and especially if it's been raining, just turn your sprinkler timers off. Do not water your plants until they're very dry and they really need it. Thank you so much for being here today, Madeline. This is wonderful. Thank you. And thank you. Until next time, this is Community Connection.